Hey, uh, welcome to the second part of the tutorial uh, where I will show you how I was using the effects map in my workflow and uh, as the beginning uh, I will uh, explain the basics of the effects map node and afterwards I will explain how basically I was using it inside my work uh, for creating this uh, stylized grass so let's start to bring this bad guy into our graph FX map and uh, in FX map you can see there is uh, input background and there is input uh, input image so we need to bring some image as an input and let's select disk and decrease a little bit in size and bring it into the input image zero. Uh, double click it uh, and let's go inside the effects map. Uh, you just need to push uh, Ctrl E as uh, the hotkey and inside the effects map uh, you see the strange node that is calling quadrant node. Uh, it's the main node of the effects map and basically it is more or less uh, is like a uh, tile generator or tile sampler. Uh, you can see the parameters of uh, this node. Uh, more or less it's looking like a tile sampler. Uh, and uh, here we need to select uh, input image to bring our shape inside. Uh, but uh, for now you can see, basically you can see <laughs> our shape uh, why? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's go back to the graph and here you need to switch to the grayscale. Yeah, and now inside the facts map you can see our shape. So let's go back to the facts map and uh, I will explain you what is a quadrant node uh, is. So basically to create the quadrant node inside this effects map uh, you can mm, obviously there is the one node when you create the effects map as the node when you open it you can see one quadrant node but if you want to add another one you can uh, select from the toolbar uh, sorry not switch and yeah select the quadrant node or you can just Ctrl D and create the quadrant node. If you select the quadrant node and push quadrant it will create another one uh, with the, uh, the connections. So at the beginning you can see that uh, we can for example change the pattern size uh, here uh, uh, we can change the branch offset a little bit. So there are different uh, functions here th and with uh, different settings you can just mess around and uh, play with the uh, input uh, image. But uh, Quadrant uh, is the node that is uh, in that every new Quadrant node it is creating the tiles. So basically when you create another one it will um, tile by 4 uh, your input image for example. We can duplicate the node uh, and if you use the hotkey Ctrl Shift and bring one output to the input of another quadrant, quadrant node uh, all other connections uh, will uh, connect uh, at the same time. So let's bring our branch offset here to zero and here to zero to like, or it's a little bit confusing to see. So uh, as you remember, the first uh, quadrant node uh, is just it was like a s uh, s just our shape, a uh, big shape, and the second one is just tiled uh, our primary shape into four. Uh, four times. If we will create another uh, quadrant node connected, you can see it's 
tiled again by four. So we have this uh, uh, shape uh, tiled like four times, and afterwards uh, this quadrant uh, uh, consisted from uh, four hour shapes. It is tiled again by four, but uh, uh, but using like the four times shape. Hope it's not too confusing, but obviously uh, this is how the quadrant node is working uh, and it is useful for the tiles for example you can like in first quadrant node just uh, turn off the input image uh, select no pattern uh, here you can select no pattern and you can see you uh, create it basically as the tile generator uh, like the tiles of your uh, import image, uh, import image. Uh, so the beauty of uh, the quadrant node that basically you can uh, input uh, multiple uh, input images. For example, let's duplicate the shape node and select uh, maybe the pyramid here and input into the input image uh, one. In the facts map we could select um, yeah. we can select for example the first one input image and in uh, input image index uh, we will select input image one and yeah you can see maybe it's not too visible let's do it in a second. Yeah, you can see mm, not really visible so let's maybe square yeah um, or maybe waves yeah uh, not not really nice mm. uh, torn yeah it's good um, so obviously in every uh, quadrant node uh, we can uh, like uh, do all the modifications for example uh, playing with width playing with height uh, in uh, for example last quadrant node can we can play with the height yeah and maybe with the rotation a little bit so yeah you can basically create any pattern you want uh, so this uh, workflow flow is useful for creating maybe patterns for different stones stones and etc uh, those are basics uh, for the uh, tile generator uh, obviously use tile generator effects map is more like uh, more like complex uh, map itself it is not using for the basics uh, and I will show you why um, but all the nodes all the generators that you have for example in your library itself all those are effects maps uh, so for example if you bring here tile uh, generator and you will right click it and open reference open it uh, you will see that uh, tile generator itself uh, con is consisting from different uh, nodes those are inputs to the effects map and you can basically open the effects map uh, ctrl e hotkey and you will see the logic inside uh, let's go back to our graph so to uh, see how you can for example create the uh, tiles of uh, the grass uh, you can input uh, for example grass leaves that I have here uh, as the input images uh, let's do it now and you can see something is happening here of course it's really draft looking but you can uh, work with it uh, mess with the can control e hotkey mess with all those parameters and you can basically get some kind of uh, 
uh, uh, leaves, uh, grass leaf style. Mm. So, yeah, this is the uh, basic information about the FX map. And for now, let's see how I was applying FX map in our graph for the stylized grass. Let's delete those guys and open our FX map. Yeah, so here you can see I have um, let's delete this guy. I have two nodes. Uh, the one you already know what is what it is. It's a quadrant node, and another one is the iterate. So the main logic here is uh, the iterate node. By the way, you can create it just uh, using s your spacebar and create iterate, or you can use the toolbar and create the iterate node from here. And iterate node is basically doing uh, what uh, the icon is showing uh, on it. It is just iterating your quadrant node. Basically. Uh, it's the same parameter that you have uh, here, uh, but uh, not quite the same, uh, and I will explain it a little bit uh, a little bit uh, later, uh, because uh, for now we need to concentrate on this uh, quadrant node. Uh, and afterwards I will explain how the iterate, uh, iterate node is uh, basically using, uh, is working in all uh, the process of iterating the effects map uh, and it will be a little bit easier to understand. So let's go to the inside the quadrant node and uh, as I said here you see all the default parameters but they are hidden. So uh, let's bring in, uh, into the graph the default default quadrant node. Let's delete it. And here you can see all the parameters are like not hidden. Uh, why here? Mm. Hmm. Sorry. Why here those are hidden? Basically, they are not hidden. Uh, they are just uh, uh, they are just customized by me. So how you customize uh, those uh, parameters? For example, you can uh, select a branch of set. For example, you want uh, to create uh, some logic beside uh, behind the branch of set, uh, and you push here and uh, click empty function. Afterwards, you push edit and you enter inside the uh, branch of set function. And here you can create any logic uh, that will operate uh, with uh, with. Uh, for now, I'm just clear it uh, to show. Will operate with X and Y uh, the uh, different. Um, different uh, settings uh, or logic behind uh, how the X and Y uh, will uh, perform in a branch of set function. So let's leave this quadrant node as of the default with default parameters uh, to like um, see the difference between uh, my node with all the customizations. So the idea here is uh, that you can uh, parameterize all the functions you uh, see here to create such effect. So the main idea uh, behind the effects map that I'm using here is uh, as the input image you can see that I have uh, basically two leaves of grass and they are going inside the effects map and as the output uh, I'm getting uh, a lot of different leaves uh, uh, and the difference is uh, in height for example in width 
and uh, the amount of the leaves and uh, there is little uh, difference in uh, rotation too so if you go inside the effects map just click double click it you can see that all those uh, things that uh, I just uh, said to you uh, they are uh, parameterized uh, in these uh, functions so yeah I changed the pattern of set size of the grass rotation uh, color luminosity and etc uh, so how I did it uh, and yes yeah, so the uh, uh, one uh, thing I want to mention that uh, the idea is just to create the set of uh, uh, grass uh, as the texture that uh, will uh, look like the grass is uh, just growing uh, on the uh, on the ground uh, and uh, uh, each leaf uh, has uh, the uh, variety uh, from the different other leaves um, so the main principle how the uh, quadrant node is working uh, is if for example let's let's explore it uh, let's go for example inside the uh, top uh, color luminosity uh, function I click edit and here you can see really uh, not amount of notes it's uh, really easy logic here but um, you need to understand uh, the layout of these things uh, if you just read the uh, name of the um, of the frame uh, here I have luminosity pattern of set pattern size and pattern rotation uh, here you can see the pattern of set here the pattern size here and pattern rotation so all those functions here I parameterized and uh, why I am doing this in one uh, color luminosity function if I go inside the for example offset just uh, select the edit or pattern size or pattern notation you can see I have only one node and this node is get float uh, with the name of pattern rotation here in pattern size I have get flow 2 with pattern size so basically uh, in color luminosity node I have all those uh, variables you can see pattern offset pattern size pattern rotation all those variables uh, I'm like storing here and just calling from uh, from these uh, functions so uh, th the idea here is uh, create all your logic in one function because uh, it's really uh, really uh, user-friendly looking when you can explore all your like uh, uh, all or your logic all your functions all your uh, variables in one place so basically uh, at the first uh, I was creating for example this logic I just uh, copy it and I'll show you now uh, so I copied the pattern of set uh, and I am going inside the pattern of set let's do it in like default default our quadrant node pattern of set I am emptying function go into the edit mode and paste here all my pattern of set so at uh, the first pass when I was learning the effects map I created uh, like all the logic inside each function independently and it was really hard to work because uh, I need to jump from one function to another and see the different parameters especially when I want to tweak uh, the outlook uh, of the overall pattern it was really like hard to work with uh, such kind of workflow that's why I brought 
all my logic into one color luminosity node. And it is really important, you can't bring everything inside the, for example, pattern size or a pattern offset. Because uh, the quadrant node, how itself it is working, it is going from the top to the bottom. So, for example, if you declare any variable in pattern offset or pattern size, you can't use it inside the color luminosity because uh, at this, uh, so the quadrant node, uh, the engine of effects map is just going from top to to the bottom, and if uh, something was declared into the bottom functions, it it couldn't be uh, used uh, in the uh, top functions. That's the main reason to declare everything in color luminosity and you can use all the variables uh, downwards in all the functions. So it's uh, you need to understand uh, really clear this. It's basically how the programming is working and uh, yeah, so just uh, if you will do this uh, th th this way, uh, this, uh, that way, uh, you will get uh, the correct working uh, effects map. So let's go again uh, in our quadrant node into the color luminosity. And yeah, you can see that here I brought everything uh, together and it's uh, really comfo comfortable to work uh, such a way and yeah mm, it's 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 good so let's uh, discuss what are those nodes uh, so for example in let's clear it for the default look so uh, quadrant node um, for the color luminosity, there is uh, one output. Uh, you see, it's it's uh, it's like the output with one number. Um, in my uh, quadrant node, let's go inside the color luminosity and uh, let's see how it is looking. So I have uh, like two floats. Uh, what is the float and how you can bring inside it? Just push spacebar and type float. You can see that uh, there are like four floats. Uh, if you are not uh, familiar what are the floats uh, or integer or vector or other like um, um, types here, uh, just google it uh, uh, or just look uh, inside the Wikipedia. It's um, it's it's this is like the types of the variable. Uh, I I will try to briefly introduce you uh, the difference, but yeah, it's 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 quite easy. It's just the type of the variable, uh, and if you want uh, to know a little bit deeply uh, the difference between those, just uh, Google it, and yeah, it 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 will be it will be beneficial uh, for the understanding. Because uh, I have a little bit of the background in programming and it is uh, helping me here, but uh, don't be afraid, it's not uh, really complicated, it's just a simple basically math here, it's just really simple math with simple uh, calculations, no nothing fancy. Uh, I'm still like le learning and uh, uh, I recommend you to start as easy as possible. So, as you remember, for the color luminosity output, we have like only one uh, variable, uh, and it is float. Uh, for example, what is the difference between uh, float and integer type? Uh, integer type I you can see uh, in, for example, a random seed. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and the difference between the color luminosity uh, why it's float because uh, the uh, like uh, variables here you can see it's like uh, point, uh, 73, uh, point, uh, 63 and in random seed uh, the increments are going from 0, 1, 2, 3 so this is integer this is uh, float and the difference is uh, really like crucial here for example if we empty function and go inside the function and create for example here integer uh, to the uh, so basically integer it's like uh, one 
0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. Uh, it's just a simple digit. And uh, for now we need to output this uh, parameter uh, for the color luminosity. Uh, how we can do it? We just uh, click right uh, button uh, to this node and you can see uh, that we can select set as output node. So we can't output uh, this integer because uh, as I said uh, the color luminosity is float. So let's create here float for example. And now, yeah, it's not great, you can set as output node. You can use, for example, uh, to um, yeah. In, for example, uh, a random seed. If we go inside the function, you can create, for example, float, but you can't output it. Yes. Uh, but you can convert the float to the integer, so to integer, to integer, yeah, and now you can output it. So, yeah, you you can convert float to integer and output it. So th this is how it is working. So let's see what we have in our node in our quadrant node. Let's go again inside the color luminosity and here you can see as I said I'm using float, uh, two floats. Uh, after first float there is a function, a function random. Again spacebar random. Uh, random node uh, if you hover uh, with your uh, mouse uh, you can see the description that uh, this is function uh, that uh, generate the random value between 0 and the entry val uh, value. Uh, so it will generate uh, the value uh, between uh, 0 and 1, so for example uh, point, uh, 0.5 or point zero 0.02 and etc. Uh, and here in my case if uh, random will generate for example uh, 0, I will add to it uh, point 0.9 uh, because uh, I don't want to have uh, the color luminosity uh, value as the zero. It will just uh, disappear my uh, grass leaves. They will disappear. That's why here I'm just fixing uh, in, in, in case it will be zero, just uh, adding uh, 0 0.9 uh, parameter here. And here you can see that if I will change, for example, parameter here, the color luminosity will change here. So it's 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 all working. Uh, so after the plus, after the add operator, uh, I have uh, the uh, control sequence node. Again, spacebar and sequence. Uh, this is a really important node. Uh, basically, it is uh, bringing all your parameters or all your variables into one. Uh, how to say? Uh, it is just storing everything in the memory. Uh, so, for example, if you need to save some kind of parameter, uh, you will need to use the sequence sequence node. So, I'm going from the luminosity to the pattern offset. Again, let's go back to the default quadrant and you can see that after color luminosity uh, there is um, pattern offset here. After pattern offset there is pattern size as I have here. After pattern offset there is pattern size. So basically uh, with a sequence node uh, I'm bringing all my logic uh, together and uh, transferring all the parameters um, uh, t to the to the uh, to the like uh, end node so basically here you can see it's uh, orange because it is uh, as the output node uh, overall so in the in this no in this uh, node uh, uh all th all my information that are here into the bottom plus uh, this uh, variable is storing here 
and I can use all the that uh, all this information um, uh, in my uh, functions here. So all my variables that are declared in color luminosity are available to use in pattern offset, pattern size, pattern rotation, pattern variation, and etc. Till the bottom of those functions. It's really important to understand that when you declared everything in top in top uh, function, you can use all those parameters uh, uh, t t to the next uh, functions to the bottom. So let's go to the pattern offset. Uh, again, in default quadrant, pattern offset consists from x and y. If you see, it is float it is float. So let's go into our uh, quadrant node and pattern offset. I have uh, like two floats. Again, a random node. Um, this node is new for you. It is basically uh, as soon as I need to store those two parameters for x and y, I creating the vector uh, for float flow to um, so basically uh, it is storing uh, my uh, variable for uh, X and Y here and I'm creating a variable and calling it as a pattern of set uh, so you just need to create set put inside set my vector uh, put the name for example pattern of set O2. Uh, this is just for the um, for, for the demonstration. Basically, I already created it here, and when I set the parameter, I need to save it somehow, and I'm saving it uh, inside the uh, top input um, uh, in a uh, uh, sequence node. So for now, uh, it's already. Uh, uh, you see the like mm, some, so something was happened uh, so the thing is that when I uh, declared here the variable uh, pattern offset uh, 0 2 you can see and uh, put it here you can see that uh, something just uh, just happened yeah uh, so what happened uh, we need to go to the pattern offset in our quadrant node pattern of set and go inside it and you can see uh, here uh, the variable that is calling you just need to put get here uh, the variable uh, that is calling it is calling pattern of set and I already declared not pattern of set but pattern of set O2 so for example if I put here O2 you can see everything came back to the uh, normal so what happened? Basically, in a uh, pattern offset function, uh, the variable with the name pattern offset uh, was missed. Uh, that's why, uh, basically, this uh, function that I have here was not uh, really working. So, uh, so yeah, it it was just uh, missed uh, because uh, the variable that I called in the function it it was not basically in sequence node because the name was uh, not correct. So for example, if I bring now pattern offset with this name here, you can see that it will broke again. So I will delete this uh, uh, variable from the main graph, go into the pattern offset and declare here the correct name and yeah everything w is fixed now uh, so this uh, tip I think uh, really demonstrate you how the if, uh, quadrant node is working self and how uh, really important to declare the right names and to, co to declare uh, right names uh, to put your variables into the sequence node and call uh, your variables into the uh, ins inside the functions uh, with uh, get uh, node and here you can see it's orange because it's set as uh, output node so when you basically called uh, the uh, variable you need to output it 
so sequence no uh, sorry in sequence get node just put here the name pattern of set and set is output node this is already set so yeah uh, uh sorry you can see it's it's not working because uh it's it's really cool now we are learning to because uh here i am getting flow 2 and here i uh, i'm getting flow 1 so it's not uh correct so i need to get flow 2 here put the correct name and now i can output it yeah and everything is working when i delete it you see uh, it's not working because i'm not outputting anything i need to output it and everything is working let's go again inside our quadrant uh, so we finished with the pattern of set basically it's quite similar logic with pattern size uh, with pattern offset, uh, you can see that um, there are some uh, parameters here. Uh, uh, those uh, parameters, I'm just uh, p uh, um, how to say, I'm just uh, created here uh, while I'm playing uh, with different parameters, and those values are like more or less that uh, creating the effect I want. But of course, you can, for example, change. You see, um, it's too much. Sorry. <laughs> you can put here for example 8 and you can see that by x this is corresponding to x this is corresponding uh, to y uh, I'm offsetting by x a little bit to the left mm, and I can do the same for the y for example 0 8 and you can see that everything is just uh, go a little bit down this pattern offset is really important because it is working with the pattern size so the main idea if you can see that uh, i'm inputting the uh, two uh, grass leaves that are like flying uh, in space <laughs> uh, yeah uh, and the main idea is to put all those leaves uh, onto the ground so I don't like this gap, uh, so I need something like this. And as soon as you can see that uh, the, there is a difference uh, in sizes, uh, basically in height, for example, those uh, two grass leaves are uh, in height uh, smaller than those. Uh, uh, basically, in like a default situation, I will, uh, as I'm decreasing the size of, those, of, the, of this pattern, I will have the gap here. Uh, because basically it is uh, decreasing the size from the center, not from the bottom. There is no, no li uh, more like uh, pivot uh, on the bottom. The pivot of your image, uh, of your I input image is in the center. So I need to move down the smallest uh, grass leaves uh, to the ground. That's why I am uh, using uh, in my effects map uh, the logic. Uh, that is connecting here with the pattern size so as i said let's see the default quadrant node pattern size two floats you can see uh, in my quadrant for the pattern size i'm using again uh, two floats for x and for y here i'm just do a little bit of the randomization here um, yeah and uh, now I'm bringing again everything to the vector uh, float2 uh, and storing everything uh, inside the variable that is calling pattern size. Um, so this thing is when I have a really small leaf um, uh, like here, uh, I am moving, uh, if, it's, if it is small, I am moving uh, by y uh, in pattern offset down so uh, let's see for example if this size is uh, 28 you see it's basically everything moving down but uh, here if I will put for example 02 um, 
uh, sorry, not O2, but mm, hmm, it's strange. Yeah, just a second. Um, so the thing is, uh, for example, if I have point eight not to the correct direction yeah uh, so you see uh, now the uh, grass leaves uh, are looking the same uh, and the one uh, when I'm putting uh, the like uh, value uh, point two two uh, the grass leaves are decreasing uh, and uh, the smallest one are just moving down and there is the difference uh, in height. Uh, this effect I'm looking for and I'm basically applying it here. Um, this node is basically moving uh, your uh, position uh, in uh, uh, Y so you can see it is moving down everything or moving uh, for example up uh, as I said uh, I don't want to have uh, the situation like this uh, I want to uh, remove the those gaps and that's why I found out the parameter uh, here uh, point uh, oh 005 uh, yeah and it is just uh, sitting all my grass leaves uh, onto the bottom uh, of the uh, image uh, onto the ground. So this is like the effect I'm looking for. So again, let's go to the uh, quadrant node and as soon as we discussed uh, the pattern uh, size, uh, so in this function we need to call pattern size as we are doing here and again it is float to type because if you remember in uh, pattern size there are width and height two parameters uh, and those are like float to uh, sorry th uh, the width and the height is float and as soon as uh, here uh, I'm using uh, sorry uh, here I'm using vector uh, flow to I'm calling the variable with type float to and again I can call it because the sequence map is uh, in in uh, input uh, store my pattern size uh, variable so in this sequence node I already have the values for the luminosity the value for the pattern offset and the value for the pattern size and it is going up and to the final node that is using for the pattern rotation basically it's the same uh, quite like uh, easy uh, logic uh, what we have for the pattern rotation turns and degrees again those are floats so we uh, can use uh, basically uh, in our pattern uh, rotation uh, segment uh, two floats uh, randomize it and plus so uh, the like uh, those values again I found out why oh, when experimenting so if I put for example four you see it's just uh, rotating a little bit a little bit uh, to the right uh, and yeah so I'm live here like point uh, zero o two it's 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 good rotation for me um yeah and i will go uh, with it so yeah this is how the effects map itself is looking uh as you can see it's not really complicated uh those are uh really uh, simple uh, logic uh s simple calculations uh it's just adding me the variety i want with this uh, set of grass leaves so now i'll will show you the basically the beauty of the effects map why I'm uh, using it 
uh, basically the main idea as I said to get as much variety as uh, as I can and uh, as quickly as possible uh, so after when uh, you finished all your logic so basically uh, when you finished uh, with everything that you want to uh, use for the deformation and for the scattering in places, sizes uh, and other stuff, rotation uh, for your um, I input image uh, so uh, the main idea maybe you question uh, the question you have now why I have like only two leaves here and here there is like completely different looking thing so uh, the uh, iterate node <laughs> is coming here guys so for now we can delete this quadrant node uh, so iterate node it uh, as you can see there is like a comment leaves amount uh, if we select iterate node uh, and by default iterate node is looking like this and there is uh, iteration uh, again uh, it's uh, integer uh, and uh, you can just iterate uh, what you actually can iterate with this node when you connect this iterate node into the second remember connect only into the second output output one it is calling uh, yeah it's it's working like this so when you connect uh, iterate node with the quadrant node basically you can iterate uh, the um, uh, the iteration, uh, the uh, pass uh, of all those functions. So every iteration it will recalculate the quadrant node and you will get another result. Uh, in iterate node, uh, in iterations I have the logic. Uh, it is looking like this uh, and I have uh, two floats. Uh, why I have uh, two floats? Mm. If I put here, for example, let's see, 0, and here I will put 1. And now you can see that basically my FX map is working only with one, uh, uh, sorry, with two default grass leaves that I have here as uh, the input. It is just doing all the operations that I created. It is just decreasing the size, moving the pattern down to remove the gap, and just uh, yeah, just uh, playing with the color luminosity. If you can see the difference between those, uh, so it's like the first iteration uh, for one uh, leaf. But of course, I want to do all my iterations not only with one. Uh, input uh, image but uh, with mm, uh, two three or four maybe uh, inputs and every input uh, will generate it and calculate it uniquely so it's it's b you need to understand that it's really beauty of the FX map so for example here I put uh, two uh, leaves and you can see uh, another leaf is added and it has uh, another pass through the uh, quadrant node and it is uh, it has um, already the different in size in height for example uh, and if I put here two and there is like a third uh, pattern added and it has another vari variety in height uh, and uh, offset so in this way I am just creating uh, the overall like uh, grass that it is growing independently different leaves of grass so it's it's really cool uh, and the logic here again the same as soon as I will iterate uh, for example uh, in sometimes I want like uh, two grass leaves sometimes I want like three f uh, three or four so here it will uh, again generate 0, 1 or 2 for example but it's float it will generate um, but for me it's as soon as the output is integer uh, I'm just considering only like integers here I'm just here using floats uh, I don't know why but so you can you can just use integers it's not really 
important here. Uh, but yeah, in case if this is zero, I will at least have have uh, two leaves. Uh, in case uh, if it's like two, I will have four leaves in other iteration. So yeah, uh, let's see how it is working. So in iterate, um, there is like basically a random seed. So what a random seed is doing it is just uh, randomizing this node. So uh, for example, now I have like three. Uh, type of uh, three input images, th three input uh, leaves and I can like decrease to the six and here you can see I have only two. Uh, six, uh, five, I have uh, this variety. Uh, in four I have uh, this variation. So as, as you can see it's, uh, it's so different. But uh, for now I want to use uh, Seven, I think, uh, because I need like three uh, leaves, and now in quadrant node I can use again the random seed. So in quadrant node, the random seed it is randomizing the all the parameters uh, inside your logic, inside all your functions. So I have like eleven random seed, but I can have like ten. Again, we are working with three leaves, but you can see now it's uh, completely different uh, looking. Uh, we can we can have some something like this, uh, or maybe this. You can see the variety is uh, really uh, really huge, and the grass is looking completely like completely different. Uh, and this is like the main thing that I was looking for. Uh, for example, you can create another effects map and it you can uh, use uh, as the input images, for example, like uh, if, uh, this effects map. Uh, so this effects map as the input images to the another effects map. And uh, using quadrant nodes, you can create, for example, here one uh, uh, iteration of the grass uh, looking set here another one another one and another one for like iteration so basically you can create the atlas for the uh, effects map and uh, yeah you can just map uh, your planes uh, to these different grasses and uh, you will get more variety in your grass and uh, yeah it's 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 uh, it will be really quickly and you will get like already painted look or the stylized grass and it will be just created in seconds and you can just change the coloring change the cuts you can ch you can just basically work with all your graph and considering your effects map variety it's like the a really powerful tool for just uh, generating uh, a limitless amount of uh, patterns uh, with the grass so it's it's really coo uh, cool looking and uh, we did not touch uh, yet the pixel processor it's another like uh, the variation you can get uh, in like uh, deformations but the understanding of effects map is uh, really important uh, so that's why I want to like explain uh, as much as I can uh, because there is no really a big amount of information on such topic uh, and it's the shame but uh, yeah mm, uh, just I really recommend you to dig inside the effects map it's just uh, add you another layer of uh, interest working and and don't be afraid it's not uh, complicated uh, really it's it's easy just break down uh, the basics and uh, uh, build everything uh, together with a sequence node and yeah you, you are ready to go so the idea here is to basically create different sets of grass uh, and I can show you that uh, I have this scene in Marmoset. Yeah, so this is the scene that uh, I have. It's really basic, just showing the uh, grass um, 
just yeah for the presentation matters and now I can for example uh, just export my new generated grass uh, and we can see how it will update in uh, Marmoset scene uh, so yeah I will generate the output new outputs just uh, wait a second uh, yeah, and we can yeah you can see uh, it's just updated and if you will explore the mesh itself uh, you can see that there are cuts are happening here and here uh, because uh, the plane itself uh, was mapped uh, onto another pattern but I will show the beauty of the effects map that actually you can fix it now inside the substance designer without touching anything with the geometry for example uh, you are like uh, uh, looking this not inside the marmoset but inside for example Unre unreal or unity engine and you don't want to mess with the geometry so go back to the effects map uh, and what we need to do so first of all we need to see that there is a cut t on the right so as i said i li I, li I left uh, the branch of set uh, for the custom customization so I need to uh, for example uh, move a little bit uh, to the left everything so I I will just do it now and let's see what was happened let's export again outputs and let's go to the yeah so for now we fixed this part but we have the problem with this part so what we need to do let's go again to the for example pattern offset uh, so by X we need to move uh, for example uh, everything a little bit to the right let's try to do it in uh, pattern offset uh, and by X uh, so it's like horizontal movement let's play with this parameter maybe two ah it's too much I think maybe 28 okay let's play with this um, expert again yeah you can see it's it's a little bit better but not clear and I want it to be like clear yeah we need to clear work here so what we need to do uh, there is like a little bit uh, cuts onto the top and again here the cut uh, on the left so again let's tweak it a little bit let's put here three uh, not three but maybe 26 yeah and uh, we need to decrease a little bit the height uh, so we can do the uh, y offset so maybe put here eight I think it's enough and let's output again and let's see yeah perfect now we can check there, there are no cuts uh, the grass is looking cool um, yeah so Yeah, so it's how it's looking in Marmoset. I'm just trying to remove some kind of artifacts from the shadows. Yeah, so you can see that uh, we can um, really have another uh, grass uh, variation mm, really quickly, uh, and it's 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 really cool that we can uh, yeah, we can basically eliminate all the errors inside the uh, effects map I itself and it was really quickly I'm just iterate different stuff and for example uh, again uh, really quickly we can for example randomize uh, this uh, maybe grass and let's see what we can get here mm. 
let's try this again it's it's uh, a little bit smaller in size and it's absolutely in center so I think we will not have any problems at all here with this pattern let's go to the yeah it's 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 it's, it's looking nice um, so yeah mm. cool uh, I like it so yeah this is uh, basically the almost end <laughs> uh, of this uh, tutorial uh, I think I described uh, as much as I can uh, and I don't remember maybe something left but I'm not really sure but yeah those are like uh, main principles of the uh, quadrant node and iterate node how you can use those nodes uh, in effects map uh, and how overall it is applying uh, into the grass pattern itself and you can see it's uh, it's not really uh, complex at all and yeah I, I recommend you again to use effects map maybe not for the grass leaves but maybe for the rocks or uh, stones or any other pattern you are creating uh, so yes um, uh, thanks guys uh, uh, I'm really appreciate your support and I'm reading the comments um, so thanks uh, I, I really like the feedback and <coughs> I will continue to create the stylized looking uh, uh, graphs and tutorials in Substance Designer because uh, I'm agree that uh, uh, there are not uh, a lot of such tutorials and it's the shame because Substance Designer is uh, absolutely fantastic software that you can create not only the realistic uh, materials but stylized looking materials too uh, and I'm really like uh, digging this style and I want to create uh, more variations uh, so yeah uh, Till next tutorial and thanks for your time. Bye bye. Have a nice day.